So here I got a walk-in freezer that is not working at all. I come here, I got no operation. So you would wanna check to see if it's in defrost. It does not feel like it's in defrost. So find out what's going on with it. One, one step at a time. First thing I wanna know is, if, is what are the pressures like? If it is pumped down or if it has a high pressure on the, on the suction side. And if I have power between in and four, 240 volts. Okay, so regarding pressure over here on the suction header, I got 150 pounds of pressure. That means that my liquid line solenoid valve is open and for whatever reason, my compressor ain't running. Now, it's also gonna be important to note for power. Now, I do not have, I was telling you, need to have, see what we have, 230 volts between four and in, right? All right, so there is in, four. I don't have anything there. But it's interesting to note that I got some voltage here between three and in. I've got something weird. But between but between three and ground, I've got 118 or half of my 240. And that's the only place I have that much voltage. I don't have it anywhere else. So between four and ground, I got something weird, 19, something back feeding. So we've got something electrical going on with this system. We could have a, uh, something keeping the compressor from coming on, like a low pressure cutout or something. So we're gonna find the compressor now, the condenser. Easiest way for me to find the condenser is follow the copper. So we've got this. It's a box right here. This whole area behind the wall is the freezer. And we walk around over here. We look up here, so right there. That's our line set coming out of the back of the evaporator. It goes up and over. Comes over. Right there, and it turns, goes down, and then it turns again right here and goes out the back wall, and it is the second one from the left, right there in the middle, that one. Second large suction line to that side of the building, to that side. This is fucked up, man. This is the ghetto out here. Tell you what. All right, so these units gonna be in here. These condensers are back here. You see, so they're in here in this cage right there. There you go. Let's see if they're locked or not. Yeah, it's locked. So the manager has let me in here. Now I'm in here. And don't let this kind of stuff fool you. See, this says walk-in freezer. But I know that it's my second suction line from that side. So it's going to be this line set, this liquid line right here that I'm touching. Right there. This one here goes and it's the third line set. That's not the one. Even though it says walk-in freezer, I don't care what they say. It's this one here, which goes to that unit that my bag is sitting on. And so just to be sure... Bam, right there. Same, same way it is on the inside. About 150 PSI on the suction line. That's the one. Alright, here we go. What a big mess, huh? what we call masacotes. What y'all think it is, huh? Hmm.
Well, we got power to our defrost clock. So we just gotta start poking around with the meter and figuring out what's going on. All right, so just for fun, just for the hell of it, let's push this button. See that button right there? See that button right there? Let's push it. No, nothing. Nothing, huh? Okay. Let's push this other button. I think it's that one. So this goes like that, right? All right, let's push that button. Oh, it came on. How about that? So we were out on a oil fail, I believe. It don't look like we got very much oil in there, huh? So somebody has got this all messed up. Like they got this wired like all fucked up. So what I have come to determine is that this is feeding my liquid line solenoid valve, obviously, because I've got uh, 240 volts there and So this is just a big clusterfuck, okay? But what I have noticed is that the compressor comes on and it pumps down and that's occurring. It's pumping down. And I've got 208 volts to what I think is going to my liquid line solenoid valve and my TIM control. So I'm gonna go back inside and troubleshoot in there now. It is of my belief that if I have power going out through here, if I have a working liquid line solenoid valve and a working temp control, then this should not be occurring right there. This should be equalizing or it should be running. It should stay running. Okay, so this is important for you to see. This is part of the diagnosis. So I'm on volts and I'm gonna check across terminals I got zero that means that that's working that's what that means so I have been looking for a refrigerant leak and it looks like I have found it it looks like I have found it So then I thought I had another leak, so I started looking down there in the corner.
you know you can only really sit and look for leaks on any particular call for a certain amount of time there comes a time when you just have to eventually stop and say okay now what and regroup Because, you know, sometimes these leaks in these systems make absolutely no sense. And then I look again over here where I first started spraying the bubbles. Because the bubbles have been sitting on there for a while, so maybe something popped up. Then you realize that all that time you spent doing that has been a total waste of time. But God, that leak's gotta be somewhere, right? So I eventually found this occurring. Now I know it had a cap on it before and at this point, I, I don't remember if the cap was really tight enough or, or what. But I found this, so I started focusing on that. I tried to tighten it before I do anything else. I find that it still, still leaks and it's already tight. And now by this point, I've already spent at least an hour, maybe two hours, leak searching. Because I also did go and leak search in the evaporator but I just didn't get any footage of that. So I just, this, this turns out really to be it. Um, otherwise I'll just waste a bunch of time and then the customer will wonder why I spent so much time leak searching and, and odds are I'm, I'm not gonna find it. So then I replaced the valve stem under pressure with my little valve stem core remover tool and double check for leak. After that, make sure the leak is stopped, which it has. And then before I cover it all up and before I hook any gauges up, do this. Blow any foreign non-condensables out with the pressure in the system. Well, it is freaking raining here, uh, and I am going to try to get some refrigerant oil up in here. Uh. I don't like getting wet. This blows ass. It totally blows ass. All right, so it turns out uh, we're low on oil. When it comes to a leak at the Schrader valve leaking, I got that repaired. Now I'm adding oil. I got my oil pump and I'm going in through the suction line. And if that ain't right, then fuck it. So, I'm gonna pump. Damn, oil levels go up to the halfway mark. All right, next bump. Eek. get there.
What do y'all think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Keep going. They got a head of oil pump, right? Maybe y'all can see it better like this. It's a lot happier now that it has gotten oil. Okay, I think uh, that's more than enough oil right there. Uh, you know, learning I am, so if that's too much oil, and like if y'all guys, if, if any of y'all know some of this, uh, let me know in the comments, because uh, uh, if I'm doing something wrong, I'd like to know. That's important to me, so. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we did all of that today, all that running around, and you got to know the system pretty well, and it's got a switch right there. Now, I do have to say real quick that this is a stupid design. Well, it might have been good, and they might have had, you know, good intentions when they were coming up with and figuring out this switch, but this switch had me puzzled for like an hour and a half, and it wasted that much time on the call today. And if that switch opens, well, it shuts all that stuff off, you see? Ain't that crazy? Nah. But, back up and running again. And, well, hopefully y'all had fun. Uh, I had fun. So, um, I'll go up here, up my ladder, close up my liquid line solenoid valve. See, I got it like that. Let's kind of dress that up a little bit and close my ladder up and I'll be rolling out of here so thanks for watching